this is going to change your trading and this is going to change your life and believe me i am not exaggerating so usually what you see me do is you see me going over a concept in a single video so one video one concept now we are going to make a video on how i do it in the mentorship in the money making team as you know i don't just give out concepts i tell you exactly how to apply it and where to apply it all the concepts that i am teaching right here are in harmony with one another in the previous six videos we talked about order blocks fair value gaps time and price market maker model guide reversals and no resistance how can we combine those exact concepts with market structure so how is everything coming together and of course these are not all the concepts but how can we combine these concepts that we talked about so far and combine it with market structure to get an overview of the market before we start this video in order for you to be able to fully understand it i've made a notion a study notion which you can use to write down your notes and your discoveries of price feel free to send me your studies and feel free to send me your markups it's in the pinned comments beneath this video so there's actually a few things that come before market structure the first thing we need to understand is again context so for example here on nasdaq we've been going over it how did we know it wanted to reach into this order block right there and it didn't want to continue higher off of this fair value gap alone that is again the first two videos ticked off because that is the fair value gaps telling us a story so right here for our drawn liquidity alone we already incorporated two of the videos right there it's either the first fair value gap right there that is holding that first fair value gap did not create a new fair value gap higher because that first candle that is sitting right there, that first candle, after this candle gets created, the next candle should be what? The next candle should be an expansion phase of the new fair value gap that is going to be created higher. That doesn't happen. We got the early signs on the lower time frame. In this case, lower time frame, meaning we got early signs on the weekly and especially the daily right there. But the monthly wanted to continue lower like so and then that already indicated to us we want to reach for the overlapping part so this part right there that part where the fair value gap the standalone fair value gap like we mentioned is irrelevant aka that is the no resistance part that is not where we are expecting a huge move higher or whatever of course we can expect some kind of resistance but that first fair value gap that is sitting right there that is the most resistance before we reach the overlapping part in the form of that order block that is already three videos that we talked about order blocks fair value gap no resistance so the monthly overlapping part that was our draw liquidity coming into these months right there all right so we have a bias referring to the market maker model guide where you have a bias what is a bias let's define it bias is where price is currently heading so what is this monthly doing based on the fact on the fair value gaps and order blocks it is likely bearish right overall yes it's still bullish on the longer term but the next candle what is the next candle likely going to do on a monthly basis is going to be a bearish candle so the direction equals your bias the bias is just the direction where do you think price is heading towards and that can be done very easily what has price overall been doing what does it want to reach for that is your bias that leads to your bias that is the market maker model guide video and the next step in that market maker model guide video is narrative narrative is how how can we deliver towards that bias which is having all those time frames in context again so on the monthly we are reaching for that overlapping high right there all right do we have anything on the weekly on how we can deliver towards that draw liquidity on the weekly we clearly see this weekly fair value gap that is sitting right there so if we want to continue lower how can we continue lower using narrative using context your flawed and your lot then that fair value gap is likely where we are going lower from and why did i stop at the weekly because that showed me the first fair value gap so if we play a little bit of price right there it comes into the weekly fair value gap and then eventually continues lower right there now context right here on the weekly time frame is what premium array in the form of that fair value gap to discount array the discount rate is sitting right there. What did we also mention in previous videos? 
any time frame you are working with. So in this case, the weekly context. Weekly context is taken. What is the time frame below that weekly context? What is the time frame below a weekly time frame? It's the daily. So just look at the top left right there how I've organized my time frames. Monthly context taken, you drop down into the weekly context or at least into the weekly time frame and you see if we have weekly context, etc. If we have weekly context taken and we still have weekly context after that as well, then we don't drop in time frames. But if we have weekly context taken in this case, and we don't have new weekly context just yet, so the next weekly candle right there is still forming, then what do we do? We drop down into the daily time frame. Then on the daily time frame, what are we seeing? We are seeing that we are creating a daily fair value gap right there. Still the same exact draw liquidity, this monthly level right there. If we still want to deliver towards that monthly level, how will we deliver there? So the bias bearish narrative, how will we deliver there? If our bias is bearish, how will we deliver towards a draw liquidity? Premium arrays. Those premium arrays, what are they? Inside the market maker model guide, we talk about those premium arrays are your boundaries to now go into the lower time frame, to now go into the five minute, to now go into the 15 minute and potentially even the one minute if you combine the time frames correctly. Off of a daily PD array, you are not going to go into the one minute time frame. That is going to end in a disaster. All right, so if we want to go lower, where can we likely go lower from? We have this fair value gap overlapping with the lows, with the context lows that we just took. Perfect. So that right there creates our what? Creates our context again. Premium array to now what? Discount array right there. So what have we just done? We have incorporated, first of all, already order blocks, fair value gap video, market maker model guide video, and a small part of the no resistance video. So which videos are we missing? Time and price and reversal. And obviously the market structure video, which is of course this video. All right, so now diving into the 15 minute time frame. The first thing we need to know if we want to look for trades is time and price. On that Tuesday, the 24th of October, did we have news supporting the idea of trading that particular day? And then as well, of course, in the next day, Wednesday, 25th of October, did we also have news supporting the idea of trading that day right there. Yes and yes. Perfect. So the first step of the time and price video is now checked off because we have news agreeing to trade on that day. So price right now can continue lower off of that daily for value gap on the right day and the right day meaning news day. A news day meaning a day where the economic calendar is supporting the idea of trading lower or trading to wherever price wants to trade to. The only thing is we need volatility to support price. So time and price right there. First step checked off. The next step is ideally, what is your ideal kill zone for indices? In this case, NASDAQ. That is 9.30 a.m. New York local time until 4 p.m. In that time window, I would say, all right, go ahead and trade. You can get very specific with that, but you don't need to. As long as you understand between 9.30 a.m. New York local time and 4 p.m., you can trade perfectly fine. All right, now our kill zone is not quite agreeing just yet. So we wait. We wait until 9.30 for tomorrow right there on that Wednesday. Then the next thing is reversal. And this is where it gets interesting. So before we've actually gotten into market structure, we already needed to know all those concepts. We have talked about the previous six videos right now before we even got to market structure or before we even got the chance to talk about market structure. Because of course, our market maker model guide, the video mentioned that that premium array that is sitting right there, that will push price lower until at least that discount array. Now, how can we know it wants to reverse? Once price reaches that premium array that is sitting right there in the form of that daily fair value gap, that is where the reversal will form. Once it sweeps that fake top, we can expect an ST to form. An ST meaning that we have this bearish fair value gap that is sitting right there that creates the ST. So this high that is sitting there right now, that is your potential intermediate term high. 
the intermediate term high in this case being the highest high that came into the premium array and that caused the st then why is this not a confirmed intermediate term high just yet because in the market maker model guide video we talked about needing those two high probability lags in order for us to be certain that price wants to continue lower or wants to continue higher in other words your entry pattern so to sum it up right there st equals potential intermediate term high because that is the first high probability lag that we have again what is that high probability lag that we talked about in the market maker model video it's coming off of a previous pd array and it creates a new fair value gap lower or of course higher depending on the direction that you want to trade in so right here if we skip a few ticks right there and we continue lower which does take some time because of course that is asia session right there but there we have a new high probability lag lower now to understand this correctly time at that moment is not agreeing in order for us to call this an intermediate term high right there price has now confirmed it so this right now is an intermediate term high because we got that st then we got that new high probability lag lower of that st so in other words we got two high probability lags lower that's it that confirms the intermediate term high right there but time is not agreeing correct so you would not trade it at that moment in time you do not trade it in order for you to take trades you want time to agree in order for price to establish those high probability lags to establish that intermediate term high it doesn't necessarily need time to agree as long as you understand that the high formed in that premium array is still formed on an economic calendar day that is still important but for the kill zone itself that is not that important all right so now we have basically gone over every concept what is the next step let's dive into mark structure a little bit more that intermediate to my high why is that an intermediate to my high in the first place the first step for it to be a potential intermediate to my high is when we have this high in the middle you have a short term high to the right of it so lower to the right of it and you have a short term high lower to the left of it when i refer to a high i refer to a swing high a swing high is established with a three candle pattern where you have one candle that sticks out in the middle like this one the candle left to it lower left to it is indeed lower and the candle right to it right there the wick i'm looking at the wicks is also lower to it to the right of it that creates a swing high so if those are the swing highs how can we define again those swing highs the way i view that in my head is that when i define things you first have this vague concept which a lot of people don't define because they can't define it so let's first take a short term high what is short about that high a short term high the short part means that it's just a standalone swing high there is no swing high lower to the left of it and lower to the right of it there can be one of those but it doesn't have both then the high part of that short term high is swing high and again for a short term low that's exactly the opposite of course then an intermediate term high what is intermediate what is that intermediate term what does that mean that means that there's a short term high lower to the left of it and lower to the right of it and again that high part that is a swing high and of course we can define that swing high by that three candle pattern this right there is an intermediate term low because when we are moving from that premium to that discount array right there we are always targeting an intermediate term low and of course when you have bullish context from discount rate to premium rate, you are always targeting an intermediate term high that's not going to be an intermediate term high or an intermediate term low on the same time frame as your context time frame because that is not an intermediate term low on the daily time frame it's just a what a short term low on the daily time frame all right so that is our target now how can we actually target that well how can we deliver there we have our bias right now again it's all fractal can you see what i'm trying to tell you that all these concepts incorporated with one another i give you the concept and i tell you where to apply it and how to apply it. the buy is right there bearish that low is our draw liquidity aka our target narrative how can we deliver there it's the same thing you're doing for your entry pattern all you need to use for your entry pattern could just be only fair value gaps how do we go about that of course we first wait for time so let's actually wait for time right there to be in our favor as well which is just that kill zone right there we have time right now in agreement so let's remove the line and let's see how we can now get involved 
on the 15 minute time frame we are creating hey a fair value gap that is sitting right there all right but what are we doing on the one hour remember we always need to have everything in context with one another so on the daily time frame there's no reason to come back above this intermediate term high that is why it's an intermediate term high because there's no reason to come back above it because everything is in context then if we now go into the one hour on the one hour we can see all right we're also potentially creating this one hour for value gap right there so once we had this sting right there into the 15 minute fair value gap already lower is that something you would want to trade off of well you can you can of course you can trade off of that just knowing that it is lower probability why is that because we're forming a one hour fair value gap right there and that is a concept that we've not gone into very in depth on the youtube just yet but we do in a mentorship that is candle signs because right there we continue a little bit higher because we sting into the one hour for value gap that we are creating right there and off of that one hour for value gap that is where we can continue lower from because on the four hour is there something above this one hour for value gap right there on the four hour we can see there's nothing above it there's no four hour for value gap above that one hour for value gap right there meaning that the one hour can drop lower already right there so of that one hour fair value gap alone, is that an entry in itself? Yes, that is an entry in itself. That right there is already an entry. What would you cover? Well, where does price have no reason to return back to? That short term high right there until it reaches that intermediate term low, which is the next thing we will go over. So this could already be an entry, but let's dive into the one minute time frame. So here on the one minute time frame, we're seeing this one hour fair value gap right there. Then that one hour fair value gap is what? Is our premium array. That premium array will target what? A discount array. A discount array is, is either something on the one hour, as in a one hour discount array, or it can be your intermediate term low, which is always going to be your target right there. So ideally, we want to get involved before we reach that low. But the main thing is we want to get involved before we reach the target, which we had to the left right there, which was that 15 minute intermediate term low, aka your daily discount array in the form of that short term low. So if we get involved right here, what can we see? This is a one minute intermediate term low. In the meantime, we create all this price action and we wait for this one hour for value gap to have a sting into it that one hour for value gap creates an st right there that st creates the possibility of this being a potential intermediate term high once we have this new lag lower that is your confirmed intermediate term high so this right there even that small for value gap or a little bit higher right there could be your entry what do you cover in this case if you want to cover this short term high then i would highly advise that you target a this intermediate term low and the reason for that is because the only thing protected after that intermediate term low gets taken is this intermediate term high right there everything else can do something like this and still continue lower again are probabilities of that very high no but it's important to understand that so if you want to target the lower price action as in you want to have that lower target which is right there then why not just cover the intermediate term high which we know is protected to then target this low right there and then the next thing that is important to understand that we have that intermediate term high right there everything after that every short term high what is a short term high again remember the previous market structure video a short term high is a high that leaves behind a fair value gap it's not just any high leaves behind a fair value gap as well because that creates what did we talk about in the market maker model guide video a high probability lag so that short term high then becomes high probability so this short term high becomes high probability until we reach that intermediate term low right there once we reach that intermediate term low then it's not about the short terms anymore on the one minute time frame because on the one minute time frame then it's about this intermediate term high because intermediate term low taken intermediate term high is protected short term highs are not protected right there unless we go up in time frames which we'll do so right there eventually we continue lower continue lower all right perfect then eventually we see that on the one hour context has been taken 
So the one hour context here has been taken where we had this premium rate to that intermediate term low on the one minute time frame and eventually that target, which we can also see that currently is there a lot of resistance? Not anymore. This fair value gap was probably the last piece of resistance right there. There's no discount arrays below that anymore, meaning that here price will run fast. So on the one hour time frame, what are we actually seeing? Let's fully summarize it right now. We have this intermediate term high being created, which was also 50 minutes intermediate term high. Can also be a one hour intermediate term high. As long as you understand that's an intermediate term high, but not on the daily time frame. Then right there, we have short term highs in the meantime, because in the delivery from that intermediate term high towards that intermediate term low, we will have our, of course, market maker sell model, where we have fair value gaps holding, where we have short term highs holding. So if we mark every short term high right here, that short term high is holding. This short term high is holding. This short term high that we are creating right now, which is an intermediate term high on the one minute time frame, is holding until we deliver towards this target right there. Why are these short term highs as well holding? Because they're also in context. So there's no reason for price to come back above them. All right, next thing is one hour context taken. What did we mention all the way at the beginning? One hour context taken drop down into the 15 minute time frame to look for your context unless you have one hour context again which in this moment we don't have so we drop down into the 15 minute time frame on the 15 minute time frame what can we see that we are creating this fair value gap lower right there that 15 minute fair value gap lower can push price lower exactly like it's doing there all right and what are we seeing right now we are seeing that this intermediate term low has been taken. So what is the protected high right now if we were to retrace before we reach this monthly target right there? Then this intermediate term high that is sitting right there, that is your protected high. And using that context again, that is where we can tell, all right, where will price sting into, etc. And after this intermediate term low gets taken, that is where we can potentially look to form a new intermediate term high as well. Because it is important to understand that, for example, right here, these highs, all these highs in between, and I'm aiming for these highs right there, none of them are intermediate term highs. And the reason for that is because this intermediate term high is the only one. And there can only be a new intermediate term high once we have an intermediate term low taken which is this discount array right there because that is the weekly context which we saw weekly for value gap weekly premium rate to weekly discount array intermediate term high confirmed right there short term highs created short term highs holding they are in context continuing lower intermediate term low taken after that once we have a retracement into something on the time frame above it again that is the daily time frame right there. That is where a new intermediate term high can form. Then once we reach this monthly target, of course, that is where we can continue higher from as well. Because that is just the monthly context. If the monthly wanted to continue higher right there, where can it continue higher from? That monthly overlapping part. That is why it was our target. It's very important to understand that you need to learn how to navigate the time frames and use all the concepts that we went over right there. And the reason why most people think they like mark structure is because when I tell them intermediate term high is the protected high, obviously that does not mean that when there's an intermediate term high, that's going to be protected forever. No, because context is above market structure right there. As in, if your context is not in agreement, then your market structure will not hold. If there is something on the time frame above this intermediate term high right there, in the form of a weekly fair value gap, for example, then that intermediate term high will obviously not hold, will not be protected, will not be strong. Once we have this target reached right there, where we can potentially expect a reversal from, because the monthly then wants to continue higher, is that intermediate term high protected right there? No. Quite a few things in these videos is what I have not touched on before. Because the thing I want you to understand is that note down that just because there's an intermediate term high, or an intermediate term low doesn't mean that it will forever hold. An intermediate term high is of course weak when it's not in context anymore. 
So that is exactly when you don't expect it to hold anymore, which don't see it as a bad thing because now you know the difference between a weak intermediate high and a strong intermediate high. So New Zealand dollar, US dollar came off of this fair value gap and pushed lower. On the daily time frame, that low, aka that discount rate on the monthly time frame, is an intermediate term low right there, which creates this potential intermediate term high right there on the daily time frame. Then once we reach this intermediate term low, this right there is our new context on the daily time frame. Why on the daily time frame and why not on the weekly time frame? On the weekly, we didn't have any context just yet. So we can use the daily in that case. So on the daily, if we go into the 15 minute time frame in that daily fair value gap, then right here, this creates the first fair value gap lower, which creates your ST. After that, we have a sting into that fair value gap. We have a new fair value gap lower, creates your intermediate term high, your confirmed intermediate term high. This intermediate term high should not fail until we deliver towards the intermediate term low. And if it's in context after that intermediate term low has been taken, then it will also not fail. Then right here, we continue lower, we continue lower, and we have a big retracement. Why is that? We zoom out to the one hour time frame and we zoom out to the four hour time frame even. And on the four hour time frame, we can also see we have this fair value gap right there. So is it crazy that we had that big retracement? No, because we have a fair value gap there, which we can still deliver lower from. And off of that four hour fair value gap, if we then go into the five minute time frame, then here we can see because we have new context, we have that new intermediate term high on the five minute time frame right there with the new intermediate term low. And the only reason why I do that is because we have new context to work with. So that is when you can do this right there. Five minute ST. We confirm the intermediate term high. After that, if we wait for the right time, what can we see at 2 a.m., which is London kills on right there, or your Forex, we have news supporting the ID of trading that day. Then what do we see? We have that first fair value gap lower right there, which could already be an entry. Then if you wait a little bit longer, you have this fair value gap lower right there. Is it in context of the time frames above it? Let's see on the 15 minute time frame. On the 15 minute time frame, it is. On the one hour time frame, it also is in context. So if we drop back into the 15 minute time frame, then right there on the 15 minute time frame, we are already seeing this fair value gap. And what we are also seeing is that that fair value gap is overlapping with this order block right there, which creates your, what was the first video after the A to Z guide, your highest probability order block sitting right there. So that in itself right there, Covering what? The highest probability order block because there's no reason to come back above that high targeting first this low. But after this low is taken, then we have no resistance anymore like we saw in the four hour because the resistance part already happened here with this bigger retracement. After this, we can easily target that low as well. And this is where your order block creates a short term high. Your fair value gap is also part of that short term high because that creates your high probability lag, which creates your, what is it again? Your short term range, your short term range lower, short term range from a short term high to a short term low right there in a bearish version, of course. So all the concepts right here are incorporated. We can again see we started off with context, then we need time. Then off of that context, we have that premium array where we need that reversal. That reversal creates the intermediate term high. After that intermediate term high and that intermediate term high getting confirmed is when we have that short term high lower because that short term high is of course a short term range, which always has a fair value gap in the lag lower coming off of a previous premium rate that creates your high probability lag lower, which creates that short term high creates then order blocks and fair value gaps as well that are in context of one another then that automatically creates our entry pattern as well. If we have no resistance, so a low resistance liquidity around supporting the ID, we have a gold mine. We have a money making machine, or as we call it in the mentorship, a money making pyramid. Market structure without understanding the other things is going to lead you nowhere. The other things without market structure is also going to lead you nowhere. Long-term highs and long-term lows, you don't need them. Enrollments of the masterclass are opening up 24th of November. Limited spots like always. 
is the first time opening up the masterclass again since August. So if you want to be a part of it, then make sure to get your spot and join the waiting list. Full details on the masterclass will be released soon on what you can expect on potentially even a Black Friday deal, a holiday deal. It's not going to be your typical deal, but you will absolutely love it. So join that waiting list and make sure you get your spot. Spots are very limited. Again, I usually only bring in around 20 people. And then, of course, I'll see you on the Sunday weekly forecast. All right. Perfect. Thank you.